Today is the first tea time with Dr. Tracy. And I'm gonna be talking about the three things I love about being a psychologist and the three things that are a challenge about being a psychologist. So grab your tea or your favorite beverage and let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Dickens, a psychologist. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, well, Welcome back. I often get asked, is it difficult to sit in the room with people and listen to them all day long? And I thought, you know, if I do this video, it'll probably answer a lot of those curious questions. Now I'm gonna present the list, the things I love and the things that are challenging. And if you ask any clinician, their list will probably be different. And it's understandable. We're all unique and we have different trainings and different experiences and work in different settings. So this list is just for me. So. My number one is, well, before I reveal it, do any of you guys ever watch the Antique Roadshow? And there's always somebody who has gone in and cleaned up a relative's home or their estate, um, or they've gone in their own attic. They've discovered a piece of art or a coat or a piece of clothing or a hat. And they take it into the Antique Roadshow. Like they think it might be worth something, but you know, probably not. But we'll just go see for giggles. And they get there and they find out that they are sitting on like a gold mine, that this sweater that they think is nothing is really something from some like one time knitting master that was held captive and this sweater is priceless. Dun -dun! So my number one is that. No, not finding the sweater. It's the person coming in and discovering that they're priceless. Because most of us have been told that there are these flaws and quirks and oddities about us and we can fix it, make it better, clean it up, remove it, then we'll be valuable. We'll be worth something. But that's not true. We already are worth something. The fact that you're here breathing air means that you have purpose and value and worth. Having somebody sit across from me to realize the potential that they have within themselves. I mean, it truly is an honor and humbling I love that I get to witness people's healing journey and I get to walk alongside them, that they trust me to walk alongside them in that. So number two, <laughs> this is straight up all about me being a nerd. I like learning and being challenged and just being curious. And being a psychologist definitely requires you to be curious. I mean, the stuff I was trained in 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, it's changed. And we've learned more, we've grown more, we understand more. The learning possibilities are endless. It can go on forever and ever. And I can have masses of books just everywhere and just exploding. So definitely a highlight for me of being a psychologist is that I'm always gonna be learning. Every person that sits across from me is a different person with a different story. It's never the same intervention. Even if it's the same intervention, it's just amazing. I just love it. It just, it just reinforces my nerd. It just reinforces it. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Good times. The third thing that I love about being a psychologist ties in with my faith. Remember when I started grad school and the first time I started doing uh, sessions and I came out in a panic and I told my supervisor, oh my goodness, I, I don't know how I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna say something and mess this person up. And my supervisor was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't have that much power. It's like, your job isn't to heal the person. Your job is to create a safe place for the healing to occur. And I love that I have the opportunity to create a safe place for God to do his work. And he asked me to witness it, um, me, and all of my imperfections and quirkiness and oddities. But I also know that when I'm sitting there witnessing that, that he's also making me a better Christian and a better person. 
And that is pretty dang awesome. Yeah. And that's my number three. Witnessing God. Okay. Now, we're going to look at the challenges. Hmm. It's just a little quirky thing that I do. And I know I'm not the only one who does it. So don't be sitting out there judging me. Okay. So whenever I am reading a book for leisure, I always read the synopsis on the back. And then I read the first page and the last page to really decide if I want to buy the book. And some of you are probably horrified right now. You're like, <gasps> you read the last page? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Doesn't that ruin the book for you? No, actually, it makes me more intrigued because when I read the first page and I see what happened on the first page and then I see what happens on the last page, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happens in the middle to get him there? And so what does this have to do with the challenge? Well, here's the deal. As a psychologist, when people sit down for me, I am hearing their story. There's a whole lot of stories. I've been doing this over 20 years and not a one do I get to the last page. I don't get a sneak peek. I don't get a preview. I don't know. I don't even know where I'm entering this person's story. I don't know if I'm entering on chapter one or chapter 15 or chapter 50. I have no idea. I'm just getting dropped off in the middle of the story. They get better or they get well enough or they move away. When you sit in the room with someone and you laugh and you cry together and you have all of these emotional feels and you're in the journey and you're in the dark places with them and you're coming out of the dark places with them and you don't get to know that they ride off into the sunset. I mean, it's really is sad. It really is sad. I mean, I'm being tongue in cheek about it, but it really is one of the greatest challenges. And I love that people get better. I mean, I want you to get better. I want to talk myself out of a job. That's the whole point. It really sucks. The second challenge is something that I've started to experience over the last few years. Psychology is underneath a scientific model, a medical model. We are often quick to diagnose and just believe wholeheartedly in that diagnosis. We don't circle back to make sure that that diagnosis is even accurate. And then we miss the person. And if they're not getting better, sometimes the person gets blamed for not getting better. And this idea that we can just give people a pill and that will suddenly make them better. And a lot of society has kind of bought into this idea that they can take an antidepressant and then they'll be happy. And it's just not that simple. There is no pill that's gonna magically make you better. And also, we often set up the therapy in a way that doesn't, it's counter, it's counter to what we know about healing. Like people will come in with trauma and we know a hallmark of trauma is that they don't trust. And we try and get them to tell us their deep, dark, you know, their deep, dark secrets about this trauma. And we've met him two times. Like, who does that? Do you just go up to somebody you've never talked to and start spilling all the beans about your childhood? No. So that, yeah, I just don't like that. It just really leaves me feeling yucky. Yeah. The third thing that is a challenge, I often have found that whenever I'm experiencing the full range of human experiences, that people are shocked. If you are a human being, you're not getting out of having human suffering and pain and disappointment. I have experienced a lot of trauma and disappointments and struggles just like everybody else. And I cry, I get angry, I get upset. I know that an argument you don't say always and never and by God, doggy gee willikers, I'll get in an argument and say, well, you never. Now, the difference is that I recognize it then I'm going to work the skills that I'm telling my clients. I'm going to use those skills, but I have to, I have to convince myself to use them like everybody else. Sometimes I don't want to, it's hard. Change is hard and making the good choices is hard and it requires motivation. And sometimes I just don't have go-go juice in my tank, just like everybody else. 
And sometimes that's a real challenge because people just expect you just to be like a superhero or this robot or I don't know. It's just weird. Um, and I, I, yeah, like it's just, it's odd. So that's my top three. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, push the like thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel and share the video or other videos from the channel with your friends so they can get information that will help them thrive. And until I see you next time, choose joy. Take care.